will be starting soon. Oh, story time with Mr. Lamada, where all your dreams come true. Favorite stories with a great big smile. You won't leave lonely. Won't just talk all the reading. I just can't wait to be hearing story time with Mr. Lamada. He will be starting soon. Good morning and welcome to Storytime. Thank you for joining me. Happy Friday. And if you're like me, spring break is here. It is starting this afternoon for me. So I have an extra pep in my step. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you feel my energy out there and I hope you join in and I hope the sunshine is great where you are. And of course, if not, I hope we still get cozy together and read a very beautiful story indeed. And we have we became Jaguars. This one is another one from Dave Eggers and, uh, and, and introducing Woodrow, Woodrow White with his latest illustration. So thank you so much for joining in. I am glad you're here. Please, please let me know where you are. And remember too today that we have a special guest, somebody that works on these books in the background, all this goodness that you see out here, including what we're reading today. She's had a hand in and she'll get to tell us a little bit more about herself and of course all the amazing work that she does so please please do stick around after the reading and listen to our amazing guest today taylor who is here with us she's an editor at chronicle books and of course you've heard me many times say thank you to chronicle books thank you thank you thank you again for the amazing stories that they've allowed us to share here on story time so many of them and by the end of this week we'll be in the 90s 92 books from chronicle books that is just amazing so thank you so much and of course you make story time what it is you the people out there thank you so much for joining us today remember let me know where you're joining in from who is joining in with you and of course if you're joining in alone you're still welcome come come on in and join in story time today thank you for being here i am excited about our guest i am excited to learn about what she has to share but i'm also excited about this book that we have today we became jaguars so get ready sharpen your clothes join in and become a jaguar today yourself thank you so much for joining in and let us see who is with us this morning ready to enjoy our great story and of course ready to meet our guest when she comes on after the reading. I am super excited and I hope you are too. And I guarantee you it is for a good reason. We're in for a treat. Thank you so much for joining in story time. Let us see who is with us. Right first through the door. Abraham, not on Zambian time today. Congratulations, young man. Thank you for joining in story time. Absolutely love it that you're here. Good morning to you. And Terry, of course, good morning to you as well. Right close by in San Leandro. Good morning. Thank you for being here. And of course, we Jaguar on all the way up north. And we are with baby Bia and Amanda Waldman out in Bartho. Thank you so much for joining in Seattle. Sorry for joining us. Thank you so much for being here. How are you doing today, baby Bia? And Marlin, I'm going to say your name today just so I can get it right because I've been practicing. Good morning to you, Marlin, as well. I hope you get to see this one later on. 
<laughs> Good morning to you, Amanda West. How are you doing today? Sarah and Nathan in cold Illinois. Well, I hope we bring you the warmth. I hope the Storytime community can bring you the warmth and you get to enjoy this beautiful story that we have for you today and the time that we have together. And spring is coming. So hopefully you will be warm very soon too. Thank you so much for joining in. Madalena Ian and Tudor in San Francisco. Good morning to you. How are you doing? Welcome to story time. Thank you so much for joining in. And all the way out in Bogota, Colombia. Luca, how are you doing? I have missed you. Good to see you here. Thank you for joining in. And Juliana as well. Thank you for being here. Good to see you back. And I hope you can go back to yesterday's episode of uh, Storytime and get to see what um, Sean Harris did because those great drawings in there and great inspiration, I think, for Luca as well. So thank you so much for joining in. Ellen Edwards in Chicago, how are you doing today? Good morning to you. Please do stay warm. Thank you for being here happy friday indeed happy friday right back at you alan thank you so much for joining us tori gambo and liana in bothell good morning to you thank you for being here and you say happy friday happy weekend to everybody joining in well thank you so much for that love hugs 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 to you liana thank you for joining us today i hope you enjoy the story we have for you Mahalia and Lydia, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy Friday it is. Oh, good morning to you, Melila. I have not seen you in a minute. Good to see you back. And Malachi, of course, right here in Oakland. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining in. Jen Vedder, how are you doing today? And of course, you're saying hi to Taylor as well. Well, she is right here. And I hope that very soon, very soon, I will read the book very soon so she can come on and share with us her amazing story. Thank you for being here. Jen Vetter, good morning to you. So glad it is Friday. I know you can join us on Fridays. Thank you so much. Oh, good morning to you, Jacqueline, joining us all the way out in Brazil. And you're joining in with Waya and Adama. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. I am glad you're here with us today. Thank you. Good morning to you. Oh, love it. Jen Vetter, I say, me, myself, and I from Auckland. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Jen Vetter, Jen Vetter, troublemaker. How are you doing today? <laughs> Pema and Maya, good to see you back after a while indeed, but I am glad you're here. You know we always feel your warmth. We always feel your presence even when you're not here with us live. But thank you so much for joining in. And I hope you've still been able to see some of the stories that we are able to share. Thank you for being here. Susan, Adrian, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining in. And you say, Jet Blue flying over North Dakota on my way to Martha's Vineyard. Well, wow. Thank you, Susan Andrian. You might be the first one joining us on a flight, really, but thank you so much. That is so good to know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Safe flight, Susan, and definitely hope you enjoy the story, and of course, you enjoy the guests that we have for you today. So for now, I will stop on the greetings, and of course, we'll get into our book, our amazing book that we have today, and this one is we Became Jaguars, and this one is written by Dave Eggers, a name that needs no introduction, and of course, Woodrow White. And you will fall in love with Woodrow White once you have seen this book, because the pictures are amazing. And this one we're reading with, you guessed it, permission of Chronicle Books of San Francisco. Yes, indeed. So I hope you enjoy it. It is coming out this spring. Please, please do find where you can get it. But of course, remember to ask your librarians, your school librarians, your public librarians, ask them for the books so that you are able to get them if you can. So here we go. We became Jaguars. I am about to transform. <laughs> All right, here we go. We Became Jaguars, written by Dave Eggers and illustrations by Woodrow White, and of course read with permission of Chronicle Books of San Francisco. My grandmother came to visit. Oh, uh, looking forward to those times. I had met her once before. She lived far away. 
Her hair was very white and very, very long. <laughs> oh, makes me think of my own grandmother. My parents went out and left us alone. <laughs> Date night. <laughs> My grandmother got on the carpet and growled. Rawr! Let's be jaguars, she said. <laughs> and look at his eyes. <laughs> I made the shape of a jaguar. No, Lena, she said. I sucked in my tummy. Good, she said. Now faster, she said. I tried to look faster. <laughs> now fiercer, she said. I lifted my hands and made them close. Rawr! Can you do that? <laughs> Good, she said. And now we go. <laughs> Where are these jaguars going? We went into the night as jaguars. Rah! Oh, but look at that magic over there. We went across the front lawn and into the woods at the end of the cul-de-sac. I had been in those woods many times, but I'd never been through them. And the full spread, whoa! Mr. Lamada's screen is not even big enough for that. Wow! As jaguars, we went through. Oh, how exciting. Oh, look at that. <laughs> In the woods, we leaped into trees and scared away squirrels and birds. Don't worry, my grandmother said to them. We won't eat you. You're too small and too gamey. <laughs> she laughed like great thunder and laugh, and I laughed like lesser thunder. And we jaggered on. <laughs> are you jaggering where you are? <laughs> I hope you are. But when we came upon a rabbit, my grandmother caught it and ate it, gobbled it. Whoa. And then she offered some to me. I didn't want to eat raw rabbit, so I said I was allergic. <laughs> My grandmother rolled her jaguar eyes, and we jaguared on. Can you picture her rolling her eyes? Oh, come on, eat the rabbit. <laughs> After the woods, there was a high hill, and guess what? We took it like it was nothing. Oh, I don't think you've been in a pandemic like me. <laughs> oh, I'm so jealous. At the top of the hill, we saw most of the world. Oh, I hope you have a place in your part of town where you can go and see so much of your world. We did not howl because jaguars do not howl. Jaguars, jaguar. So we jaguared on. <laughs> oh. Below the hill, there was a lake, and we went to it and drank from it. Oh. It looked like silver and tasted like moonlight. Oh, that sounds delicious. Mmm, that's divine, my grandmother said. Mmm, that's divine, I said, too because it was. <laughs> Let's run across the lake, she said. Won't we fall in? I asked. Hmm, I wonder that too. Not if we're nimble, she said. So she ran nimbly and I ran nimbly. And we bounced across like marbles on glass. <laughs> On the other side of the lake, we lay down and we rested. Oh, <laughs> now that is my favorite part. 
resting. <laughs> After a few minutes, she said, let's run some more. No! <laughs> and we ran up a ridge and over a mountain and across an ocean and kept running. Oh, I cannot keep up. These jaguars are way too strong and way too fast for me. I hope you're keeping up out there. <laughs> we ran somewhere. We were somewhere in the Himalayas when I remembered that I had school. Yes, Mr. Limada is waiting for you in class. Come back. I should go pretty, go back pretty soon, I said. My grandmother looked at me for a while through her golden jaguar eyes. Okay, if you say so, she said. <laughs> we ran back quickly and fiercely and nimbly. We, who knew how much school I had missed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're having fun. But it was okay. It is absolutely okay. <laughs> My grandmother wrote me a note. Oh, grandmas are the best. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today on Storytime. I hope you enjoyed that one. We became Jaguars. I hope the journey was as fascinating and as beautiful for you as it was for me. A great book indeed. A great, great, great book. I love this one. You know, when you read books and they fall in love the very first time, well, this one is definitely one of them going in that special place on my shelf. Well, I won't hold you much longer. Please remember that you can find this book once it's out. Please pre-order. You can find it where you get books. But also remember to find it at your local library. Ask your librarians to get this book and stock it so you can share it with your family. And to all the grandmothers out there, the grandparents, this one is for you. This one is for you. We know how hard this past year has been, not being able to see your grandkids maybe as often as you would like to, but we wish you the very best. And of course, we are coming through it all and hopefully that you get to see your loved ones very, very soon. A great way to end our week. And of course, a great way to introduce our guest for today, the amazing Taylor Norman coming in from Chronicle Books. Taylor, welcome to Storytime. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Lamada. How are you? <laughs> I am great. I am great. You know, like it's just there's just a certain energy that books give me, and and this definitely, definitely did just that. <laughs> I gotta say, it's really cool. I always love hearing different people read books that I've read out loud because I have a way of kind of hearing the text in my head. Um, and it's just, it's you did an excellent job. A plus. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's always it, it's always a little more well exciting, but also daunting in a, in a, in a way when when you read <laughs> with people that are involved with it. You're just like, oh, what did I? <laughs> but yeah, no, it's perfect. It's perfect because what's what's kind of cool about picture books too is like once the once we send it out into the world, it's going to be read by you know countless people. Oh, so yeah. it has to work no matter who's reading it. Like for the first time they pick it up, they don't practice because the reality for a lot of like teachers yes. and parents and librarians too so it's great you know you it, it should be easy to read you shouldn't like trip up or anything and i feel like um just proved that we did a really good job on the book so thank yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> no thanks it, it flows really well i love it and just and it's just a relatable story too, you know, like, and, and personally, I, I, I spent, I got to spend a lot of time with my mom's mom, my grandma. And so this really resonates as soon as I was reading, it just took me to that connection right away. That is so cool. I know. Well, what I really loved about this book when it first came in is I love, you know, I love Dave, Dave's language so much. I think it's really, there's some really fun moments, like words that he kind of, you know, either invented or he kind of repurposed them to make sense for the story, which I thought was really, really cool. But I also remember like when you're a kid, I had, I had three sets of grandparents and, you know, I was really close with my, with my mom's mom. And then my dad's mom was like, she was very, she was older. She was a little bit, she was just a little more removed. And she was almost like kind of a scare, not scary presence, but just you were a little uncertain about how to be with her. And I feel like Dave did such a good job kind of capturing the the strangeness, especially when it's your family. Um, it can be weird to be like, I 
I should, I love this person. I barely know them at all. And so I feel like she, you, you definitely, um, got at some of those, those vibes yeah. with, the, with the Jaguar transformation too. I, did not, I, I don't think my dad's mom was ever going to transform into a Jaguar. She's kind of the opposite <laughs> grandma, but, <laughs> but there was always a bit of a risk factor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's amazing. But yeah, so you worked on this project. Like what, what do you do? <clears throat> yeah. So I'm a kid's book editor, which means that I get to, the best part of my job is I get to read books for a living. So what that looks like is when this book first comes to me, it doesn't look the way it does now. It basically looks kind of like um, if you're working on, on a computer, mm -hmm. it looks like a Microsoft Word document. Or right, and right. Yeah, so it, it appears as just like text only. And when I first get it, there's no art. There's no illustrator or anything. So it really is this great sort of first act of imagination to be like, okay, what's happening here? What's he not saying that I get to see on the page? Right. Um, and is this something that, you know, it needs it needs pictures to go with. And, and it, in the case of a picture book, you really want like about half of the story is gonna be coming through the pictures. Because if you, mm -hmm. you know, have a line of text that says like, you know, the Jaguar had 18 spots and he was sitting down with his front paw crossed over his back paw. Like we don't even need pictures for that. We can't right. see everything. Yeah. And so you want the author to be like leave room for the illustration to come and fill in. Mm -hmm. um, and this book just felt like, oh my gosh, I can't even, I had so many different. So the, ne the next part of my job is like the most fun part. Once I read this document, that's like, I like it and I like the text and I decide, okay, we're going to publish this. It's mm -hmm. my job and the designer's job to help choose the artist. And that's like the most fun job of all, because that just means you're going to bookstores and reading so many books and looking at the art and saying, mm -hmm. could this person do good Jaguars? Could this person do great nature scenes? Um, could this person like, is the way they draw lines like very fluid and fast and it'll really capture this sort of movement of this text. So I start kind of like everything in my brain is like, does this work for Jaguars? Um, yeah. And we see a lot of like, are, you know, we go on Instagram a lot. Instagram is actually a really like cool place to find illustrators because you see mm. people's like works in progress and stuff that maybe they wouldn't post to like an official portfolio on their right. website, but, huh. um, but stuff that they just like are experimenting with. So we, you know, you look around and find just the right person. And Woodrow, his, I mean, his, I don't know if you like, does that kind of make sense? Like talking about line, because that's something I think about a lot. Just like the shapes of the, the and the fluidity, the fluidity of a line is like really key for a book like this. That's going to be so the whole thing is moving forward the whole time. Right. It's no, really I mean that's going to be active. Yeah. No, those are things that this is where again this is the beauty of what you do, because we see something and and sometimes you know you notice something and you're like oh there's that something. But to think like even when you say. You, were, you wanted something that was moving, something that has movement. I see movement when I look at this picture. Good. You Good. know, so it's, it's great. something, it's, it's amazes me. Like right now my mind is just like blown because it's like, <laughs> you're saying things that where I, I wouldn't have thought of when I, when I first yeah. see the book. And so, yeah. I think it's the kind of thing too, where like, if it wasn't working, you as the reader would have a sense, like it wouldn't be hitting in quite the same way. And you might not, the only reason I know what to call it is because it's my job, but like you would still have the same, the same sense I would that it's like, this is too, like it's too solid. It feels too kind of like mm. dug into the ground. You know, I think you'd feel yeah. it if it wasn't working. And so what, is, you know, what this job is, is it kind of like just hones basically the vocabulary around what that even means, you know? And mm. so, and, and the more you read picture books, the more you start being like, huh, like I, really love this art on its own, but it doesn't help tell the story very well. Yeah. And that's always kind of the mix of, of what you're looking for. The other thing I really love about Woodrow's art is um, his palette. So his palette, a palette is like the choice of color. I'm thinking white right now. You're taking me into <laughs> <Yeah>. spring break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not that kind of palette. That's a whole different expertise. <laughs> um, I have some expertise there too. No, but like, so a palette is sort of like all the mix of colors in one thing. So if you picture like a Rubik's cube, the palette is like a full rainbow. Mm. Um, and Woodrow's palette, the, ch the colors that he always chooses for things is like kind of otherworldly and a little bit like mostly realistic, but a little bit off, 
which yeah. we thought was kind of appropriate for the story where it feels mm-hmm. like it's really happening, but you're also like, is this possible? <laughs> like, is this happening? <laughs> and so we kind of like that. Yeah. It's almost like a destabilizing sort of color sense a bit. Um, and yeah. his work, I'll, you know, if you, um, anybody who's watching this can go onto Instagram and look at all of Woodrow's work and you'll see that sort of, um, like that sense through all of all of his paintings, even things that are not for the book. He's all, he's very good at kind of creating this. It's almost like how you feel on Halloween when like everything is a little bit, even things that are normal. Um, he's really good at sort of creating that sense of, of uncertainty. He's yeah. cool. <laughs> oh, he's that's cool no, guy. that's awesome. <laughs> and uh, you know, like you you mentioned, um, you know, being you you read you read books you, you you know you help bring books to life but you 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 meet them in their infancy and you you know you're part of the process of creating them so this brings me to a thing like has this spoiled your ability to read books <laughs> like you know do you become like if i visit a classroom as a teacher or a place where kids are immediately my gonna... brain kicks in so i don't yeah. know for you how it is No, that's a that's a really intuitive question, and honestly, it's something that, um, yeah, because when I so I wanted to be a kids book editor. We're starting from when I was thirteen. I like it was the thing I wanted to do because I worked in a in a bookstore after school when I was a teenager, and I just fell in love with kids books. And it was like the only thing I wanted to do because I was like, I get to read all the time. That's like the whole job, and the job t- turns out to be more than that. <laughs> um, but what you don't think about is exactly that, where like if you make something that you're passionate about something that you do all the time, it does transform it a little bit. So I have different sort of, you know, part of me, uh, part of me, I can like kind of turn my brain off if I choose to read, like if I'm reading like, you know, whatever one, the Newberry, I try to be like, okay, I'm just going to read this as a book. Um, but there's <laughs> in the back of my head, I'm always tracking, like I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> so that definitely doesn't go away. Um, yeah. And I try and like I try and read a lot of different kinds of books because I find that if you just read the same type of book, you know, whether you're an adult or a kid, if you only read adventure stories, you know, not only the adventure stories themselves get kind of boring because you start right. to just expect a lot of them, um, but you also your brain starts going to particular patterns, and I kind of like to. I like to keep my brain exercised and like yeah. go into a bunch of different patterns. And I feel like they all kind of come back to help each other out. So, like on yeah. my job, I work on both picture books and novels. And I feel like that actually really helps me. Like the picture books help the novel brain and the novels help the picture book brain too. Um, just because they're different, you know, and they, they're they sort of like different ways of thinking about the same the same idea. You could tell there's certain stories that you could put into a novel. This could be a novel, you know, like the story of a boy yeah. transforming into yeah. a jaguar could be a lot longer story. But um, so how do you kind of translate the elements of a novel? book and, and vice versa i think about that stuff a lot and that kind of i think helps me not totally get ruined but there are definitely times where i'm i'm a little jaded <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I'll admit it. laughs> yeah so what is there i mean it's an amazing job and but are there bits of it that you feel like oh this is a grind like when you get to that part you know everybody has teachers have their grading whoever has whatever it is that it is they're like oh yes. maybe that's not your favorite oh part my gosh what, what is that for you yeah, I was like the thing that I was, I always like thought, I mean, a teacher was like such a, I always felt like I couldn't be a very good teacher, mostly because I have le- lesson planning just terrifies me. <laughs> I couldn't do that. I couldn't plan days ahead of time. So I love being with kids and like I would be happy to be like a classroom aide, but your job of like all the planning and then I don't know, you have a lot of gun stuff. I think it's the same <laughs> thing with editing where like, the part of my job where I'm doing my job, I love, like, I love editing. I love talking to my authors. Like I feel very close to like all of my mm. author relationships were like, we work so closely together and I love that. But the parts that I don't like are just, you know, it's part of, it's sort of like the homework of school where you're like, you, it's not the fun, like experiments and science and it's not the fun, you know, dioramas. It's like the stuff you just have to kind of just get through and so it's like the boring sort of emails and meetings and just the more typical office stuff if I could just do my job and never have to email again I'd be very happy (laughs) Um, (laughs) thankfully that's like you know but it's like a it's probably like takes up the most time of my job but it's um 
it's the e- you know it's the, it's it's the easiest. I just like the stuff yeah. that's, that's like harder and a little more complicated, like the books. Yeah. You know, I want to be working on is just the books. Yeah, no, and so, and no, you know, like also just I think thinking that's true for any job though too. Yeah, no, that's true, and I'm just thinking. You, know, and you like, mentioned yeah. emailing and stuff. Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry about that. I think it was there was a lag for my no no no. I, no, I just want to say like I, I know I know there's too much overlap. Um, I think like. I always feel very lucky to be stressed about the things that I'm stressed about because like their thing, you know, I get to be passionate about my job. If something Mm -hmm. goes wrong, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter mostly of like a typo, which is a huge deal to me, but to most people, (laughs) it's probably going to be okay. So I I feel like that's sort of where I'm able to get, even on the bad days. I'm like, well, yeah. Oh, wow. And and more stressful stresses. (laughs) Yeah. I, I would imagine. Have you ever had a situation where, you've had your book go through the process and then you find that something where like, and, and it might be something that maybe I might not notice because I'm not part of the process, but where you notice and you're like, Oh, that one, we should have done this. And have you had to? Yeah, there are, there are definitely, yeah, there are some, I mean, they're like, if it's a matter of like a, a literal typo, then we can fix that at, at a reprint. So that means like, you know, the first time we make a book, we print, a couple thousand copies of it and then if it keeps selling we print more copies and so the the bad thing is like if you have a typo in a book that didn't sell and you're like, like well we're not printing anymore <laughs> so it's gonna be in all of them that's kind of a drag yeah. but there are other books there are definitely books where um i get to the end of it and even like it's already out and i and i reflect and think Um, And I try it like this is hopefully earlier in my career, but there are definitely books where I feel like I've chosen the wrong illustrator for the project. Like it just, Mm -hmm. it didn't, it didn't the text in a way. And so I look back Mm at not only a handful and think that just like, you want to be amplifying what the text already has and kind of adding to it. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be, you obviously don't want to be detract like way from it or making it less, but you also just don't want it to be a mismatch. You know, you want it to not clash. Um, and, and that's you, how you, you mentioned the word mismatch there. So, and I'm thinking too, as teachers, sometimes you're partnered with a supervising teacher or whoever it is, and sometimes it doesn't work for whatever reasons, personalities. So, are you yeah. thinking of, you know, you see, say, for example, you see Woodrow's work and you're like, oh, this would be great for this next project. But then, are you then trying to meet the people, see the personalities, see how they might? That's such Work. a good question. So one of the funny things about about picture books, especially, is that it's pretty standard. And I try not to do this, but it's pretty standard in children's books that the author and the illustrator they don't really meet or talk that often. Yeah. So the whole relationship wow. of the book is kind of managed by the editor. We like I kind of think of myself <laughs> as like a, a moving people around all the time. Yeah. So it's it's me who's kind of managing the the author, and then I work with a designer at Chronicle who kind of manages the artist. And it comes from this idea of like you know if an author was really mad and they're like this girl was supposed to have you know a polka dotted dress and now she's wearing stripes, I'm gonna come after the illustrator the goal is to keep big personalities from kind of clashing. Um, But I usually like to try and get everybody at least, if not directly communicating, like I like everybody to, I want everybody to be like completely overjoyed with the way the book turns out. So that's a huge goal of mine. But then I also like, even if they can be in a little bit of communication, even if the four, like the best is when like the four of us are, are all on one thought pattern. So me, the artist, the author, and the designer all like, what about this? What about that? What about that? And it's a cool like idea stew. I love that. So that's definitely the goal. And I'm aware as I work with people, I start to kind of realize what their process is. So certain like love talking to their illustrators and would never like they give illustrators total free reign to do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. They would never get mad about polka dots, whatever. Um, but then there are other people who are like, they're just a more, um, you know, they're all, they're all humans. So everybody's yeah, as right. different as a, as a human yeah. is from a human. And for every author, each of their books is like this incredibly precious thing that they made. And so people have different, you know, if you think about, about um, how some people are really good at sharing, toys and people really want to hold on to them it's kind of the same mm-hmm. idea um with authors yeah. and illustrators too and so you kind of when you know with woodrow he was like incredible i mean he's wonderful to work with and um i think just brought so much of this book overall 
and I would be happy to work with him again. There's nothing I can think of. My, for him, like personality, not an issue, like at all. Yeah. It would only be just like, do I think this is the right um, story for his art yeah. to tell? Yeah. Um, and, and ideally that's where you end with people too, you know, yeah. where you're just like, okay, could they fit this book? And would he want to do this book? Would it excite him? Um, yeah. You also like, I always want to put people on stuff that they are really like jazz to work about work on because that makes them do work. If they're like, this mm. is so awesome. Like I want to make this mm. the book that I would have like picked up as a kid too. That just makes everybody happier. So happier, yeah. right? No, I, I, I'm learning so much just from being here. And for those of you who are watching right now, or just joined in just a reminder that we have the amazing here, Taylor Norman, an editor from Chronicle books, joining us <laughs> and sharing her wisdom in this beautiful world. And of course, she worked on this one. So just on that too, like, please, if you have questions, please feel free to type them in there and I'll try to get them to her um, while she, while we still have her here. And then, um, so looking at say this yeah. book, it's amazing. It's, you know, like, I love it. But what other works have you, have you had a hand in? You know, like when we are out there and we see them, we think of Taylor, what would those books be? <laughs> That's great. Well, I know you had a guest on your show yesterday, Sean Harris. And yes. I work, um, I've worked on all of his books actually so far. So the book that well, you have on your show yesterday. His new, his new title. I think it's Sean Harris, the Rack YMC, Oakland YMC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. The racquetball <laughs> champion for over a year now. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm fully pro Sean. <laughs> he deserves all the victories he can get. <laughs> but yeah, so I work, I worked, um, with Sean on all of his previous books. And the book you guys read yesterday is the first one he's ever written illustrated. And I think mm -hmm. it's just like, it's so, Sean is one of the most incredible brains that I've ever worked with. You know, even before I worked with him on books, he always just kind of like blew my mind. So um, he is somebody who I, I, I'm like really excited to see him just do more um, books overall. And I worked on, let's see, I worked on a really fun graphic novel series called Lowriders in Space. Um, it's about these three friends who love fixing cars um, and they want to open their own garage to fix up lowrider cars. So they enter this competition, um, the best, the best car wins. And so they get this old car that they kind of put together with all these old rocks and that blasts them into outer space, outer space fixes up their car and then they win the competition. So that's a series novels that the next one will be out next year and it's really really fun it's like yeah. it's kind of in like ha like there's a lot of spanish in it and a lot of science too so we have like a glossary throughout it's very it's it, it's really like an awesome series and that's illustrated yeah. by raul the third who um he does a series of picture books that i don't know if you have had them on yet but um they're called vamos mm -hmm. and they're all like they're he grew up in el Paso, Texas, um, which is a border town between um, Texas and Mexico. And um, so they're like fully steep of his memories growing up there. And they have like this, they're kind of like Richard Scarry, um, but for a whole new generation. Um, yeah. Really, really cool. Is yeah. So incredibly cool. Those, check um, them out. Yeah. So check, definitely check those out. And those are probably for like maybe like ages seven to 10, those, that series. Um, but there's some really fun adventures in that one. You, so you know what I found, Taylor? You know what I found is these books, I've, I read so many of them now. And I honestly, they are <laughs> children's books, but they're so fun. There's just, there's just so much in them. And like we talked about too, like yeah. talking about the mini galleries, like it's such a spread in here. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad you say that. I mean, I think there is like, this emphasis right now on, and like really for the last 10 years of getting kids to move into chapter books and reading on their own. Um, and that's a great goal. And I totally was that kid. Like when I was little, I just loved reading. I, I read as many books as I could, but picture books are really like, honestly, they're, they're harder to make and they require more of you as a reader because you're synthesizing both um, the text on the page, but also you're getting so much of the story from the art. So I actually think that like, we talk a lot about visual literacy in publishing and the importance of, of, a, of to read an image um, just as, just as, you know, literally as you would be able to read a line of text. And so I think like, I love how much emphasis you put on, on visual books here, mm -hmm. uh, Joe, because I think like, you know, that's a, it's, it's like, it's like reading novels is kind of, 
2D and reading anything, anything graphic from picture books all the way up to graphic novels is kind of more like 3D because you have this third piece of information that you're putting into your brain. So I think picture books, I like, I love when, when teachers use them like all the way up, you know, sometimes in high school, because there's a really complex, it's a complex way of telling a story that is completely separate than just prose novels with just plain old words. You know, so I'm a big, that, big fan. Oh, that complication that you just mentioned. That's exactly the yeah. thing I had all along. It's <laughs> 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 just, just so crazy that like, it doesn't feel complicated. It feels easier, but your brain is working harder. Like it's really, it's really, really cool. And like, yeah. I'm sure you've had this experience too, but like, and kids who are watching might notice like when you're reading with an adult, we adults miss so much that is in the images because even oh. me whose job it is like i will always look at the text first and instead of instead of you know kind of adding in the images there but like kids because they start off reading picture books before they can read the text you guys are the ones who are kind of looking at the images That's to tell you what the story is. So there's so many books where you'll read it with a kid and they'll be like, what happened with that guy? And you're like, I didn't even see uh, it. Yeah. Like, that happens <laughs> no, all the time. Kids are know, when really you look good. At the, that point, speaking to that point, Taylor, when you look at it, I didn't notice before, when, I've looked at this book since I received it. I've been looking <laughs> at it and read it and gone through but I didn't see that the shadows or the, the reflection was <laughs> them. I just assumed yeah. it was just, you know, the shadows of the Jaguars. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. Yep. It's them. Yep. But yeah. So it's like those little details. Totally. I know I missed that Did you that see? I, I know. I, I do the same thing. And again, like I said, it's my job. Did you go to, if you go to the um, page in the interior where they're drinking water when it tastes oh, yeah. lemonlight? Let me see. You might Where find another the moonlight there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and then just as you as I'm getting to that page, uh let's see, not Jen. Let's see. There was a question from Amanda first. That one. I don't know if you can see it. Oh my goodness. Does Taylor have any words? <laughs> I'm just gonna read it so everybody. Do I have any words of wisdom for new readers and writers who have active imaginations? Oh man, I say it. I mean, I hope that anyone who's who's has an active imagination is writing down any of their ideas. Um, it is never too early to start making your own books. That's what's kind of cool about books is like, like you can make them at any age. Um, and I would say write them down. Or if you like don't love writing, you could have a parent write down your words. What I used to do um, with my mom, one thing that we did was fun. Yeah, and just and then we had this journal. Um, oh, there it is. See, look at their reflections below. Yeah, no, I didn't notice that. I, I did know, not. That'd be crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so you were yeah, saying, yeah. every time. Yeah, so we used to. She would put them like paste them into a blank journal, and then she would ask me, um, "What's going on here? Like, what is the horse thinking?" And I would just tell a story and she would write down all of the things that I said. And we'd make up these little stories about just pieces of, you know, images from magazines. Um, and I think that was a really good way to sort of know that like telling stories, writing stories and making stories, if you're not an artist, which I was not, I never was good at doing art. Um, but if you don't like your handwriting, uh, it's a really long time. It can take so long, I know, to get your out of your brain and onto the piece of paper. So that's the time to enlist an adult, <laughs> your grandma or your mom or your dad yeah. or your big brother, and just say like, you know, I'm gonna tell you the story, you just have to write it down. They have the easy job because your imagination is the one that's going crazy. Um, but mm. they just have to basically take dictation from you um, yeah. and tell stories. But I say, start making those books early because you can ask any author or illustrator who's working today and so many of them still have the books that they made when they were, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, mm. you know, and you can make them for yourself and just keep them. You could give them to your friends at school. I know a lot of like kids who share their projects and have like comics going on, like back and yeah. forth with friends at school. And that's a really cool way to start practicing. Just like putting, putting in a, your imagination into story form. It's like a hard thing to do. And it's the more you start doing it, the more fun it the more fun yeah, it makes me think of one, one, one that distinctly jumps at me right away is um, David Shannon, the No David. 
I think he actually puts yeah. a note that, that that was a book that he wrote when he yeah. was, like, yeah, like four or something like that. But yeah, so when you say totally. that, like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing that in the notes on the back. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, is this a good enough idea? Because I think that's like one thing that author on books for their job they have lots of bad ideas and they try, you know, you talk to any authors or people who make books and there's a lot of. Trying to make happen for you just because something isn't sort of the best book ever doesn't mean you shouldn't write it down. You should keep kind of trying a bunch of different ideas. They don't all have to be good, but if you, you know, if you, if you picture like, um, you know, you're playing baseball, if you get, one hit out of every three pitches that's amazing so so try and you know make 10 books maybe we're good and then you can come back to it and kind of keep working on that one right right no that's so true because even i mean you think of even the story and i've been trying to reach as much on the you know like the backstories the authors so i can kind of glean into what what they're trying to put across and and reading through where the wild things are it was said that it was yeah. not a hit for however long, like it was a few years no. in, finally like took off. I know, totally, yeah. And that still can happen. You know, there are these books that they kind of have a slow start and then for whatever mm -hmm. reason, they just sort of, they hit and they keep going. And I think, um, I always like to think about like, is there one person, kid especially, who's gonna really connect with this book? Like, don't make a book, don't, for 50,000 people make one for like that you're you think your best friend is gonna think is like the best book ever and chances are if your best friend is really into it there will be other people like that but it's a little easier to think about it when you're just thinking about a really kind of more specific audience and really a lot of authors will think about things that they thought about when they were kids books that they really liked when they were kids they they return to sort of the things that those are the one those are the books honestly that i see as being the best ones, the ones that really tap into their memories of like being five or six or seven um, mm -hmm. and like the things that interested them when they were that age, rather than I think when we are adults writing books for kids, we can think like, well, what do right. I want to teach? What do I want them to take away from this? And that's like, you know, that's what comes after they'll take from it, whatever right. they get out of the story. Yeah. And I'll, I'll take something more important if the story is really good so starting right. with sort of the story first i think is like yeah. a really good key for any adults who are interested in books yeah no that's man that's so amazing it's just um <laughs> it's so much great information and i just i just <laughs> hope i don't know i hope everybody out there to you you know finding this as fascinating as i am it's just so <laughs> interesting. no like i could go on this conversation could go on <laughs> like it just go on I agree. Um, no, I agree. Like, what yeah so why are children's book books important to you and i'm thinking of this too like this was a question actually from lydia <laughs> yamaguchi so um oh, cool. <laughs> like, yeah why why are children's books important to you and thinking of that why in a kid friendly way but also like even 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 the grander philosophical <laughs> sure yeah yeah yeah. no I, I i think that's a great question i mean i think um what i always feel is most important about kids books is they have the ability to be you know they're they're going to be regardless of whether they're good or not they're going to be the first books that any of these kids read and so you kind of have this opportunity when you make them to kind of make an argument for continuing to read, continuing to engage with, you know, ideas you've never thought of before for a long time. And if the first 10 books that a kid reads are, you know, boring or or more for adults or they're they don't feel honest or authentic, that kind of can can take a kid off track book wise for a really long time. And so I always kind of think about like, is this book gonna make a kid really excited like when he goes to the library? And to say like, is there, like, I want him to go to the library and be like, I want another book. Um, it doesn't even have to be a book that like is like the one that started it, but it's just, it's kind of every book has the opportunity to sort of set up a lifelong, you know, it's not even li a lifelong love of reading. It's more of just a lifelong interest in, in other people's ideas. Um, Cause that's really what books are. You know, a lot of times I think the books that are most important to me are not ones that just like, 
are stories about people like me, but they're, they're stories about things I've never thought about and like, and places I've never been. Like those are my favorite types of books. And any book can be that, even if it's, even if it's not a book set somewhere else, if it's just about, you know, a a character you've never thought of, or this house Mm -hmm. on a hill that you've never been to, like Mm -hmm. all of those things can help kind of grow your experience of the world. Um, And so I think, you know, the goal of that, that first Mm -hmm. book is really to take kids from there and then extrapolate out outwards. Yeah. Oh, no, that is so wonderful. Um, And Taylor, you know, like I, I appreciate your time so much and just, you know, like what else just to wrap it up, just to like, what, what can people go away with? And, and I, I personally hope that we can have you back here sometime and just more discussion like this because it i'm i'm finding it really amazing and i'm pretty sure out there there are many authors that are listening in right now or you know like children authors to be and just you know like um like what 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 words of encouragement do we have for them um just to just wrap it all together you know as we're thinking of these amazing I think, I think one of the things that like this is relevant to kids and adults who are watching anybody who's thinking about um, making a book at any stage of their life. Um, I think the best thing you can be doing to make that happen, (laughs) just anybody, um, is really to just live your own life to the fullest. And all the right books or, you know, doing these things that you read authors or writers do, it's really just about like, how many experiences can I have? And then when you're in those experiences, just watch them and notice them and notice how you're feeling in those experiences. Notice what the woman across the aisle from you in the grocery store, what she's thinking is going on. Your job, like as a writer is really to be both like sort of an observer of reality and then a documentarian of reality. Even if you're making a fantasy book, like the the more that you know about humans and about you know, how you work as a, as a human kid or how another like adult works as a, as a human adult, that will make your story stronger. And so I, I, when I'm meeting a lot of new authors and writers, sometimes they're so concerned about doing everything correctly that it's like, they're just reading and they're staying inside and they're studying. And it's like, no, you gotta get out and live it. And you don't, you know, when you come home, just write the first thing you think of that, like that you remember from it doesn't have to be beautiful or in the right font or anything like that. That's not the answer. The answer is really like, it's how you as the one person that you ever are experience that moment and then how you portray that to other people but the more mm-hmm. the more kind of in touch with yourself and your experiences you can get i think that all, those always make for the best books yeah well oh, thank you so much i so run up that hill <laughs> <laughs> we'll try we'll try trying, trying. Oh, goodness. Walk backwards i hear that really helps <laughs> Well, you have some love there from Amanda West, and just you know, <laughs> thank like, you. So many, I'm so, so glad many. to be here with you all today. You have a, a, an amazing audience, and I I just love seeing all these names and all these places too. It's so so cool. I yeah. definitely would love to come back next time. Next time I have a book out, we'll just we'll do it again. There's always more to talk about. I feel like I could we talk have it on tape. Amanda, we have it on tape. Amanda West, you heard that? <laughs> <laughs> <I'll be back. laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much, Taylor, and um, congratulations. I know big changes coming your way very soon. Uh, just you, know, you and Mac, for congratulations. Yeah, and um, thank, thank you, you for so being much. here today. For you know, like when I started story time, when we started story time, it was just it was reading books. But then to see this great community grow and to be able to meet people like you who are making these things happen, giving us a whole different perspective on what books are and what children's books are. I I, I love the journey and thank you for well, being a part of you, it. You are an intrinsic part of that journey. I think your passion for this and your excellent questions and you're just, you are a really thought, you know, reader and teacher. So it's not, nobody, not everybody could... <laughs> could have this show. I think it's really particular to you. Speaking of, you know, personal experiences and the thing that only you that only you get to see and experience like this this is a this is a Mr. Lamata special. So <laughs> only you can create that. So thank you. That's really, no, really thank important. You so much. Absolutely. <laughs> well, 
Storytime community, this has been the amazing Taylor Norman. You know more about her now, and hopefully next time <laughs> she's back, please prepare all your questions, ask, and um, thank you so much for being here. This has been Storytime for today. A great week indeed where we've celebrated and appreciated the support, the love that we've gotten from Chronicle Books. And I hope that up there as you go, please do remember to find those copies, find yourself a copy, see the links below, see where you can get your copies, but also use your libraries. They're there for a reason. Petition them to have those books that you want. So thank you so much for joining me. And I'm sending you sunshine and love and hugs wherever you are. And if it is evening time, I hope you're able to calm down and go to bed. Hope the energy goes down. But thank you so much for joining in. Much love from me as always. And I will see you again on Bye, Monday back with more stories. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs>